welcome to another review for Real Gamer Score. As always, I'm Planting42, and with me is my co-host, Chin himself. How's it going, guys? This week, we are taking a look at the final season of The Walking Dead. This was published and developed by Telltale Games, and then later by Skybound. Um, the original episode came out August 14th, 2018. And the fourth episode, the one that everyone's probably just getting to now, came out March 26th, 2019. The price, at least in the U.S., is $19.99. And it's definitely a point-and-click adventure. Yeah. yeah. Still with its roots in that Telltale uh, style. Uh, time estimates. Uh, unfortunately, since it's an episodic game, um, the, the numbers on TA are... Are pointing toward that but in reality if you're looking at something between two to three hours an episode you're talking eight hours give or take with a guide if you you know exactly how to pull every achievement off on one playthrough or probably closer to 15 if you just give it a a good playthrough and mop up your own one stuff afterwards yeah definitely that's that sounds like the route i've had to go down and i might need a couple more playthroughs of two episodes but i think sort of two to three hours for a completion of an episode seems about right. And there's only four of them this time. Yeah. So yeah, well, I mean, I guess they're, they're fairly long. It feels like for, for a telltale episode, there's, there's definitely a lot of content yeah. in them. That's yeah, definitely. Sure. So I guess like the plot for this one, this, this is the end of Clem and AJ's story. Um, it was set up as a huge deal. Fans expect a huge closure. And I would say we definitely did get a closure here. Yeah. yeah. Um, game starts out. No, oh, no, no, I was just going to say it. it you know, I'd hopped on about it. I, I think this was a, this was a good ending. And, you know, I've, I've said in the past when they had their issues with whether it would get published, that it's probably better that it doesn't get out. But I think this, I think this satisfies everyone. Yeah, I'm glad with this. I'm I'm definitely glad they did finish it. Yeah, because it needed this ending. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, pretty much you know, back in episode one, game starts with Clem and AJ in a car on their own, surviving, kind of looking for a place to settle. You know, hopeful as they were, um, they end up meeting a, a Walker couple, if you want to call it meeting, coming across, I guess. Um, and that decided to sit out the end together. And I don't know, I just, it struck me as kind of a, a romantic take to, to kind of start the game off. And I guess it actually sets the mood for the, the whole season, kind of looking back at it now. And uh, it, it also sets up the location for a, a, at least a good chunk of, of the early parts of this, uh, the season. Yeah. There was a, uh, if you searched a bit more, you did find some sort of some reasoning behind their actions, but uh, definitely, sets the sets the mood and uh for the for the entire series so as you play through it your job is to shape the person aj will be based off of the decisions you make and what you tell him to do and unfortunately it's nowhere near as easy as it sounds the developers did an amazing job of making this somehow a crossover of both game of thrones and the walking dead <laughs> um, there's no easy decisions and everything seems to go wrong. Um, there's no good choices. If, if you haven't learned how to harden yourself to deal with the issues of a post-apocalyptic world yet, this season will do that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there were, cause often the decisions have a timer tied to them. So you need to make a decision quickly. I, I had to pause it on many occasions to, to think through what I was going to say or what decision I went to, because I mean, I, I, you know, I was taking my playthrough seriously and sometimes there were just three bad options and silence and you kind of had to decide which was the lesser of the three evils that you were going to say. Like it was... it. Oh, I completely agree. There were tough decisions throughout. Even, even minor stuff, you see, like you immediately saw how it impacted things and you almost... I mean, I regretted some of the things i said and chose but you know stuck with it because that was that was my playthrough but man i even though that's sort of as telltale games are they're linear this this is really 
a very branching linear game. Oh, agreed. And it's kind of interesting how they did this in a way that they're, they're, they're tied to the achievements, which we'll get to in you know, a little bit later on. But so basically previous telltale games, you just kind of went through the story and occasionally there was one or two random missables. This one definitely attaches the achievements to the gameplay and your, your decisions in a way that makes you have to experience it and, and feel it a little more. Mm hmm. And I guess that kind of goes a little deeper, too, is that if you think you had emotional attachments to the characters in the previous um, games, in the previous series, you absolutely have to play this one. The depth of character interaction and how good they did at storytelling in this game is amazing. I mean, the attachments you build for the people that Clem and AJ meet are, are strong, and they really help you shape your decisions as you go through this game. Yeah, definitely. And then references to older characters, like the, or at least the potential, so... You, I mean, there are many times where questions were asked of me and I could talk about Lee, and I did in some of them, Lee being your guardian protector from the first season and lots of things that humanized the character. Like they, they really felt like they were people and not just, you were, weren't just playing a game, you were in this story that you were forging and, and shaping. Oh, great. So I guess like to give a rough overview of the like the content of the episodes, this would be a spoiler free introduction to like what happens in the game. Uh, episode one focuses on their integration into their new home and introduces you to the cast that makes up your group for that game. And also, as we said, it's kind of an introduction into a new format for telltale storytelling because you learn that there's a lot of different paths that you can take and those paths have achievements tied to them as well as some dialogue lines so there's actually a little more impact than usual to the way the game played and although you still get the feeling that there's some things that are kind of written in stone that are just the way the story has to flow it does feel like they give you that additional layer of customiz customization like you, you feel like you have a little more control in the game than i think previous telltale games have given you mm -hmm, definitely yeah the, yeah there are a lot of decisions where it was clear that it was probably going to end up in that direction anyway but, you know, I still felt like I couldn't make the wrong decision or it wouldn't work or, you know, it wouldn't be accepted or whatever. And I liked that. I, I liked the fact that there was really no wrong choice other than the, the ones that end up with you dead. So <laughs> doing nothing. I mean, <laughs> inactivity leaves you dead. <laughs> Many times I'd uh, we learned that early. Look away for a second, look back. I'm like, oh, this was a playable bit. And I, well, OK, let's just restart that section. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, I did that a lot. Uh, episode two kind of focused a lot more on the fortification of the school and helps you start to build a romantic relationship with one of two members. I don't know. I kind of thought of it as like a Life is Strange crossover moment because you, you've got a couple teenagers around. So, hey, let's have some more reasons to target your emotions. And it's just kind of a, a good way to help build some more tension in the game. Yeah, that, that, that was one of the weird things for me was I... I don't have a gauge of Clementine's age. Like I, and so I didn't, I, AJ seems to be six or seven, maybe even a bit older than that. So it's at least that many years since the first game, you know, since even the second game where she was a bit older. Like, I feel like she's way older than you would be as a person at a school. Like at, at this boarding school that you're at, like, I feel like she should be almost 20, you know? I mean, she certainly acts that, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if she's eight to 10 years older than she was in season one, I mean, she was probably maybe six in six or seven or something yeah. like that. Maybe I don't okay. know. In season one. So, so yeah, you're, I mean, I, I kind of put her for like a 16, 15, 15. 16. Yeah. Okay. I, I can, I can see that. I just, having not remembered sort of how long after this was from the, after the first series, this was, I was really bad at gauging her age. I'm like, I, this person you're talking to is like 14. Aren't you like 20, even though you don't look that yet. <laughs> it was, I mean, you, I roll with it. Suspense of dis, uh, yeah. Suspension of disbelief, but it was a little bit weird for me because of, because I thought she was way older than she probably was. Not to mention, I mean, it, there's also the possibility since this is several years after the 
the, the event that these kids, some of them might have been older anyway. I mean, Marlon, yeah, Marlon. may have been older than you know, eighteen. I mean, he, he potentially could have been in his twenties. You know, this yeah. many years on, I don't know. It's it's really hard to say. Yeah, definitely. It's but it, I mean, not that that's really a detriment to the game. It's just something I had picked up on for me personally. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, episode three really focuses on an attack slash rescue mission that also deals with the concept of life after death, or at least uh, zombie life after death, more than I can really ever recall the series touching on if they ever even did discuss it. Um, yeah. There's a character that's introduced that really centers around that concept. It it also covers some of the most like horrible, kind of unbelievable things. I, I guess you almost just have to play the episode out to to understand what we're talking about if you haven't already. But yeah, but there were it, some characters I think act well out beyond what they normally would have, and I found some of the things that that happened, at least in my playthrough, a little unbelievable. Yeah, but, it was it was beyond what you were expecting going into it. I can like for me at least, I, I some of the things that happened or had happened, you know, quote unquote off screen. I couldn't have expected in in my wildest sort of imagination of where it would have gone. But some of the brutality is is ridiculous. Even for yeah, even for a Walking Dead, you know, where you see people get munched on by zombies all the time. People are the worst, aren't they? <laughs> Just, oh yeah. I, I guess this is you know one way to show how much difference the world has in it you know there's there's people that are trying to survive and there's people that try to survive at the expense of others yeah and it really shows how far everything has come from civilization really that 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 is sort of it's a means to an end rather than you know something you would never consider yeah something just, that you won't, no one would ever consider acceptable yeah, is now it's, okay yeah, it's normalized almost yeah it's also probably the beginning of uh, where you where AJ's development really begins and uh, how he handles himself as the game moves on. Yeah, it's got some of the hardest decisions with with AJ because of other characters' ideals and they present those ideals to you and and sort of give reasoning behind it and it makes you question things you've said to him. Like I questioned many of my decisions up to this point because of some stuff that was said to me and yeah, it just, um, it, it really does the way you shape AJ really is affected by what you, everything you say, everything you do in regards to him will have an effect on him. And, and this, this episode really showed that and it, it made some of your decision, the final decision I it took me probably five or six minutes trying to think of which which option to choose really yeah that was definitely one of the most difficult decisions in the entire game i think episode four is probably the worst but three three had some of the the hardest ones up until that point and and i also want to say that the pacing of everything up to this point works really well like the the game it's not sort of jumping around between this action and then the really slow bits. It it's building up to this moment and it works. I think. Every, like Completely everything agree. building up to this, this third uh, second act climax moment. And then the finale. And then the finale. Yeah. Although you'd kind of expect it to, to like wrap up the loose ends nicely, it, it takes you on a crazy emotional roller coaster before you get to that ending. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if you thought is... the decisions you made up until that point were difficult, what you have to do in four is nuts. Yeah, if and there are some things that are out of your hands with basically what you've gotten AJ to to that point. So AJ will make. That you know will or won't make decisions depending on how you've treated him and spoken to him to that point. So, it, like it, it's it's in a way showing you 
that your choices did shape the game and did affect how the game played out without you having to interact with it at that point, which I thought was really effective. Um, also, there are yeah, there are some moments in there that are just crazy. Really, I'm without spoiling anything. That whole bridge section was insane. Probably one of the hardest spots for for anybody going through that playthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah even you, so you sort of get in, into the bridge section and then you hear something and yeah, it just, again, we're trying to do this without spoiling anything and I hope my computer didn't shut down and I'll edit no, it. We're out. good. No, we're good. That's fine. Edit that out. Um, yeah. It, you hear something and you realize you know, everything's about to go south and panic station set in, but it it's done very well. It's executed well. No, oh, agree, agree. I guess taking a look at the achievements, uh in in Telltale's The Walking Dead, the final season, there's forty eight across the four episodes, so a reasonably good spread. Pretty even. But here's where the things, as we said, differ from the original Telltale formula. There's more than just one or two missables per episode. In fact, there's it's pretty much like three or four story-based achievements, and then everything else is missable. Yeah. <clears throat> These achievements have to do with skill-based tasks, as well as dialogue options that at, at sometimes even appear mundane. So if you're not mm -hmm. using a guide, completely expect to make at least another run through each episode to mop up. Yeah, definitely. There's, uh, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, even the sort of minor decisions have an effect and will affect these achievements and stuff. And there's also collectibles that you need to pick up throughout the game and, and place them in your room or place them somewhere um, in the appropriate location, uh, which sort of alludes to the change in gameplay, kind of. It's a... So there's still the cutscene-y, pick a dialogue option moments, but the walking around is now over the shoulder. Um, and that, it, so it's not the fixed camera sort of Resident Evil kind of, you, your camera just changes as you enter a new section. Everything's over the shoulder. Um, there are some combat sections where that you're in that mode and it can be, there, there are signs that there are, walkers around you like the to say the bottom right of the screen might have zombie effect so that you know that there's something there so you can turn around but i think it i think it does make it slightly more difficult i know i died in many more of those sections than i would have in the original first four games including michonne just because those that camera angle made it more difficult to have a good view around you but uh, that could have been the idea that could have been the point that it makes it harder it, it adds they... that sense of scariness tension i guess that yeah. no i agree i agree when they when they talk to this effect of the of the game at pax years ago when when spaz and i were there they mentioned how they wanted to give the player more control over their environment so that instead of you just having this is the path, it's a QTE and push these buttons, you could choose, do I want to stun? Do I want to kill? Do I want to run away? And and give that player an option. And they actually did pull that off. And, and that's, I think, why they went to the over the shoulder as opposed to just looking straight ahead. So instead of you kind of thinking, this is my path, now it's a I'm in control like I am, you know, in, in any other, you know, character like first person third person character game is i actually get to move myself around yep yeah yeah i can definitely see that um also i've just remembered i ate and drank a lot of things i probably shouldn't have in that game every time it gave me an option i'm like yeah sure but there are achievements for it so there's a good reason yeah. to eat and drink everything yeah um graphics and sound this this looks much better than previous Telltale games it still has that that art style but this is certainly an improvement and the engine upgrade they talked about is visible there is I I experienced almost no 
chugging or telltale jank that you would sort of expect in previous titles. Yeah, I had just a couple spots where I noticed like at one point where there was a group of children walking in the distance and their clothing got changed into like the background forest texture. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that was the the kind of the game just pushing them into the background or an actual bug, I don't know. And then at one point, one like thread on Clem's shirt was like pulsing blue. <laughs> Outside of two little small <laughs> things, I thought it was a pretty good game. I didn't have any of the normal smearing or textures or polygons like just stretching across the screen. And... Yeah. And the, uh, the sound design, as we spoke about uh, before the recording, it's fantastic. Like the, the music works so well. And I, I, I think the sound is really good in this game. And I think you know, normally I play with games on mute and I wasn't going to for this one and that it made a lot of difference. Yeah, agree. There, I don't I don't think they could have done anything different when it came to to picking more apt music for the mood or or just for the for the scenes because there's so many times when you know, you needed something that was, you know, kind of an uplifting sound and and they they pulled it off perfect or or like the oh, here we go again and it's there's like mm-hmm. the crazy kind of ominous yeah, they they did they stellar job with this one. Yeah. Yeah, it was is definitely a a top tier title that they've put out. Um I mean, if we had like as we've said none of the real problems would detriments or, or game breaking or would force you to not play the game. Um, we did have a couple issues. I, I mean, I had some technical issues with the volume. Um, like I left everything at default, but um, there were some instances in the first episode with Marlon where he would talk and it would just be way quieter than the music or the ambient noise was. And luckily I had subtitles on and I knew what he said, but, um, you know, that's a minor bug that I assume was just on my end and isn't consistent. Um, there were a couple little continuity issues. Like I, there's a character named Minnie. I knew her full name without, and, and, and could have been said off screen or whatever, but I seemed to know her full name without ever being told it. And I mean, again, really minor. Um, but sort of pulled me out of the the immersion a little bit. Um, there's also a couple of little times where some of my dialogue didn't match up. So early on, you play a card game and the card game, the winner of the game gets to ask a question. So obviously it's pre de- uh, predetermined so that you get asked a certain number of questions and stuff. But some of my dialogue lines didn't match up. Like I, I spoke about Lee twice um, because questions came up. And the second time I introduced him again, like as if I'd never said that first line. So mm. that kind of, again, really minor. And, you know, the, there's what, there's eight options. So there's, uh, sorry, four options twice. So there's what, like 16, 20 different ways you could have done that. So, you know, really minor things, but, there are a few little small issues that, you know, when you've got a game this big with this many dialogue lines, it's going to happen at some point. You can't check everything. Yeah. I had one small issue with continuity that I'm not sure if it was a bug or if it's due to a branching path that I didn't take and, and also a bug or, or what. Um, I, I guess I really shouldn't explain too much about it because it's like, crazy part of episode three spoilers yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about it in our next little five minutes after our verdict but yeah suffice to say i i had i had something that that happened that i really don't think should have happened okay so i think we should tell them what we think and uh for me at twenty dollars this is 100 percent worth it um i mentioned to you earlier if they had made every game to this quality and, you know, tweaked the release schedule so that um, it all was released at the one time and I think still in the episodic format because I think that that works well even though you're releasing it in one go, almost like a, like Back to the Future did on the Xbox One and whatever else. 
I think they'd still be in business if they did that instead of the 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 rehashing of titles that they did with your in in episodes with big weights in between like I, if they had done this every time they would still be in business no completely agree i mean it, it's it's just same to be able to see this engine working this well i mean to if you could have if they could have had this done earlier and pushed out some of their other games this quality um i, I think part of the reason that we had a suffering of quality was because of how many they were trying to do at a time. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but it, it's a shame that, that of, of what happened, but it, it is amazing to see that this did get finished and, and the quality that was there on this. I completely agree. 20 bucks is, is more than well worth to pay to see Clem through to the end of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if you have done every played, every walking dead up to this point, it's the payoff for everything is worth it. No, completely agree. If you've gone this far, you, you got to have the closure. Yeah. 